Hello everyone, welcome to this Sims 3 house design video. So today I'm here in Appaloosa Plains, yet again actually, quite a few of my most recent uh, houses have been built in Appaloosa Plains, which is kind of interesting, but um, actually for once I had a very specific idea uh, for a house that I wanted to build. Usually this doesn't happen. Most of the time I just am like, oh, you know, I'm just going to see what happens. But in this case, I had a specific vision like in mind. And so it means that it was a little bit more challenging to like achieve that. So this is actually take two of this house. I tried it um, uh, like a first version of it, but I ended up abandoning that, and this is take two of my second attempt building this because, I, you know, the first one just wasn't really what I was looking for. It also took me quite a while to find um, the like a lot that I wanted to build on. I was looking at a bunch of different worlds, and um, I decided on um, like this area in Appaloosa Plains. I placed like this custom lot here. Um, it's actually very near to one of the houses that I did last year, which I think I just called three-story modern house built into a hillside or something like that. But that was a house built in Appaloosa Plains. Um, that one is actually just down the street from this one, also in a custom place lot. So yeah, I really wanted something that was on a hillside here, but not like too extreme. So I was kind of like finding this in-between little, little situation here. But um, this is actually quite a long video. Um, it's like 45 minutes-ish. Again, as I say, I feel like I say this in every video, it, it took me longer than I wanted it to. Uh, this house like this took like five and a half hours maybe to build, so quite a bit longer than I had hoped, but it, it's not like a huge house in particular, although it is actually quite big. It ends up having four bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms, and the main idea here was that it's made out of three separate well, three separate looking um, kind of modules, I guess, if that makes sense. So you can kind of see the three main rectangles right now. And there's also a fourth one that's the garage. And also in the end, that will also be like kind of a um, bonus room sort of thing, office room. But the main idea I had in my mind was these three um, rectangles, all the same size. They all will have like a, a, a pitched roof, gable roof um, with glass like in the gable. And, um, and then they were connected by uh, these glass bridges where the wind, like their windows and also glass in the floor and ceiling. And so it's like these glass bridges connect these three separate units of the house. My original idea was that all three sections of the house would be the same size, but I ended up making the center one, I think, um, it's a fair amount larger. I can't remember like what the exact, I think the other, I think the other two on the outside are 14 tiles deep and the center one is 21 tiles deep. So, um, is that like, like a, a third more or something? Uh, no, 20, it's I don't, whatever. I don't know. It's, it is divisible by seven still. So, you know, 14 and 21 are both divisible by seven. So I was trying to keep some sort of like, <laughs> some sort of like reasoning to it. And I didn't want it to be completely random, but Anyway, it, yeah, so I end up doing that later on. That's like 15 minutes into the video I do that because originally I had this like other situation going on at, on the ground level where I had like a fifth rectangle there and I, I couldn't like roof it well. It just was like, meh, this wasn't good. So yeah, I don't, I don't do this. And I actually, well, actually I do initially put a roof over the garage, uh, um, not with regular roofs, and then I get rid of it. Uh, because I make it a deck because it blocked the view from inside the house, which wasn't great. But anyway, yeah, I had this very specific vision um, for this house. So it took a bit of trial and error to get it kind of close to what I was like wanting it to look like. Uh, you can also see at the beginning, I, I made kind of a sloped driveway, which I will have to redo. But I did that to kind of get a sense of the height um, or like the, the, the like where the garage was going to go, like elevation wise. And yeah, you can see here, actually, this is another thing that was also a trial and error sort of thing. There's a few th more things, actually. So one was the spacing of the units of like these like se separate sections. So right now I have them all spaced three tiles apart. And I end up actually shifting it over, everything over. So there's only two tiles of space between each section of the house. So, you know, that's going to be a whole thing later on down the line where I do that. Um, and then I also initially 
in my mind envisioned like making the roof like on the house or the roof on each section just from floor tiles and using constrained floor elevation to get the pitched roof and you'll see me you know mess around with this a couple times but it just didn't look right and it, I, one thing I do wish the Sims 3 had was like the ability to alter like the eaves on the roof like you can in the Sims 4 because with you know just doing it with regular floor tiles which actually I'm doing it right now so you'll see what I'm talking about doing it with regular floor tiles it just looked uh, it just looked odd because there was like no no eaves at all and also on the overhanging parts at the at the front um, of the of the roof or back of the roof and you'll see when I get, I do that I don't think I do that initially but I do it later it's like see-through for some reason on the underside and it was, ugh, it was just not right but yeah and then when I use the regular roofs which is what I ended up doing anyway they have too much of an overhang but you know I don't really have any control over that so I just had to leave it but it, the overhang is definitely way too much on the regular like roof I really wish that I could have controlled that but yeah so you can see that that was the initial initial attempt there um, with the constraint for elevation roofs oh now here's another thing um these windows you probably notice these are not normally in the game um so this is actually the first time I'm making a video um, a house building video with custom content um uh, i well yeah i made like that world overview video um the world burrowsburg um like i did i did the first one 2018 the second one i think was 2020 when there was a uh, when it was finished but so that was custom content but i don't really play with custom content I like, you know, I had it installed for those videos I made, but then I took it out again. So, you know, I've never actually like built um, a house for a, a YouTube video with custom content. You know, back like years and years, many years ago, when I was like 12 or something, I, I downloaded like a ton of custom content too much, um, I believe. And I like messed up my whole game and everything because it was like overkill. I never really went back to custom content again after that, but but I had a very specific vision for this house where I wanted those those windows you you see there briefly, the ones in the gable, those triangle windows. That's what I wanted. I wanted triangle windows to fit inside the gable because they just like completed the vision that I had for this house. So I ended up using I only intended to actually use um, custom content for those triangle windows, but. These triangle windows actually came with a set of, of windows. I ended up using them for the entire house because they're so amazing. Um, I I probably will use them again in the future. But anyway, I'll, um, the the windows I used are called Modern Line Windows Set, and it's on um, Mod The Sims. I will leave a link in the description so you can download it if you want to. It's created by, um, let me see here, let me see, by hoodie h-u-d-y 777 design and that's the username of the person i mean these are from 2010 they were last updated in 2012 i mean these are old it's crazy it's like 10 these haven't been updated in 10 years but you know sims 3 is an old game so it makes sense but yeah there's also a, a set of doors as well that goes along with the windows which i'm not as big a fan of i only use the sliding glass doors from the door set, which is, which is called Modern Line Door Set, which, you know, makes sense. The other doors in the set I wasn't a big fan of, so I just used regular doors otherwise. But yeah, the window set was really cool. And again, I'll leave a link in the description to both sets. So if you want, you can um, get those for yourself if you want. Of course, you'll need those for this house. If you want to download the house, which there'll be a link as well to download this house, you know, you will need um, that content, obviously, if you want to download the house, because otherwise it'll probably look a bit goofy, or actually there'd probably just be no windows, um, all the windows would probably just be missing, but it wasn't, the reason I really liked it, though, wasn't just those triangle windows, but the other windows available uh, were really cool, um, specifically, like, the full height windows actually had a feature, have a feature I feel like The Sims 3 really should have just had, where it's like, and you can, I don't know if you can you, if you saw it already, I can't remember what I've done thus far. I think I think I did use them on the front, but you can't see it now anyway. The um, windows come in like like the full height windows come in three actually come in two pieces where you have or actually there's three different versions. Um, so you have one that's regular, like a, a single tile one. You can kind of see that's on either side of the front door there. There's like single tile windows. You know, you can see me doing it right now. There's the ones that only have one edge. And then there's ones that have no edges. So you can see you can make whatever width window you want. So you kind of put an end piece then you put like the frameless center piece, however many you want of them, and then another end piece. And so you can do, you know, you have a one tile, two tile, three, four, five, six, whatever you want with um, just full glass window, which is amazing. And they also have um, the same 
a thing for non full height windows and they have also windows with different like um different like panes in them and stuff so there's like one that's like two panes one that's like four um one that's like horizontal one vertical and, and you can also have that expandability with those as well which is really cool so there's so many different possibilities also they have these nice square windows that go to the top of the wall there's ones that go to the bottom of the wall there's ones that go a counter height it's really great um so I ended up using the windows for the whole house because I really liked them. It was really, really cool. So yeah, I feel like these kinds of windows are definitely things the game just should have had because it just offers so much flexibility. Um, you know, it's just nice to be able to like, for once, have a double wide, um, full, just plain glass window because the base game one has like these weird, like the base game comes with a, with a single wide full height glass window and a three wide full height just plain glass window, but the full height two block wide glass window has like these, these like lines in it at the bottom. It's like, why? It's like, why is it like that? It's just oh, it's so annoying. So it is great because in this, with this, and you can see I actually have it on either side of the doors there on the left. Those are two, two uh, wide um, full height windows. And I mean, they're kind of similar to the windows from Into the Future, except they have nicer like wooden frames on them. Like the frames are nicer. And here's the counter height windows. You can see I'm putting in the kitchen here, which is really nice. So really great windows. Oh, the counter height windows are a little bit too tall. The height is a little bit off on them because they're slightly too tall to put a full height cabinet over them, but they're too low to look right with a small cabinet over them. But, you know, I'd use a small cabinet because otherwise the other one like cut it off, but it's fine. Anyway, I have yet to expand the house. I will. I will expand that center rectangle where the kitchen is. I'll make it much longer. Initially, I make it too long, but then I bring it, I cut it back again, so it's fine. But yeah, I do expand that because I wanted um, to like make the back of the house look a bit better. It was like, because right now the garage has a roof on it and that blocks like the view of the river from like all the main rooms in the house. So I wanted to have just the, the, the roof of the garage just be a, like a back porch um, deck sort of deal, but then connecting it to the rest of the house was really weird, and so that's why I expanded, I extended that center one, which you'll see me do, so it makes more sense. Anyway, that'll all make sense when you see me do it, but anyway, um, yeah, this is kind of the vision, though, I had for the house. I actually, oh yeah, I already shuffled everything over, so they're all two tiles apart now, which is great, and um, and yeah, it was kind of the vision I had, these like three little separate sections, I guess a fourth if you include the garage section at the back, and they have their own like gable roofs and they're connected by these glass pathway passageways. Uh, I just thought it'd be kind of a cool idea. So yeah, um, anyway, right now I'm just kind of working out some sort of floor plan here. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, this house is four bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms. So um, two of the, so like on the upper level with like the three separate sections, like the first the first section is one, the one that has the front door, and that has a powder room, a laundry room, and also like the formal living room. And then the middle, the middle part of the house, um, which is the one I'm going to elongate, ends up having like a, a, a like normal living room, family room, whatever you want to call it, kitchen, dining room, and then the far, um, the farthest uh, section has the primary bedroom and bathroom, and then a kids' room and another bathroom, and then in the lower level. Um, it's more connected, it somewhat more connected down there, but the lower level has um, two more bedrooms, two more bathrooms, kind of like this games room and then like an office kind of lounge room. And then there's also a separate um, a disconnected section um, underneath the, like where the primary bedroom is. And that's just going to be like a random room. I mean, I put I mean like kind of like a gym work room, like work, like workshop room thing, but Anyway, you can see here, I removed the roof on the garage and here's where I extended like that deck to like where the kitchen is and it just looked weird. It just like wasn't, wasn't working. So I just decided I would just connect that section of the house over to um, the garage. So that's why I extended it. I initially overshot it a bit. I made it like way too long. And so you'll see, I have to cut it back, but yeah, it also just made more sense in the basement area to have it this way. So it just looks a bit better. But yeah, right now I'm just arranging the windows, so getting all those in, which looks nice. And there's a little glass passageway down there that connects the two sections of the house. And then, yeah, I'm just getting in some windows and stuff. And oh yeah, I'm going to make that a bedroom right here. So this is yet yet to be a bedroom, but it will be. 
I cut out some room for windows as well. So yeah, the basement bedrooms are a little bit more depressing than the upstairs bedrooms, but you know, it's still good. They got windows and yeah, I'm also just getting in some closets. I also add a bathroom over here. So um, yeah, every bedroom has its own bathroom, which is really nice. So because it's a four bedroom, four bathroom house. There's also a powder room for guests. So it, it kind of works out really well. And yeah, right here, I'm just, this is like a pool table room in the basement. The garage right now is unnecessarily large, so I end up splitting it up like so into two rooms. And then the back section there becomes kind of like an office, but also like um, like lounge room, just because it has those nice windows there on the corner that overlook the river. So I thought that would be nice to have like that. But yeah, so I think that's the layout actually done. You can see that weird section over there that's disconnected from the rest of the lower level. It's like only accessible from outside. So it's kind of a strange thing. My last house actually had something like that too. So I don't know, it just seems to be happening with these houses I'm building. Anyway, right now the kitchen is coming along here. Um, it, I think it looks pretty cool. It's very minimalist. And then you have like the dining room there at the one end. But yeah, right now I think is when I'm going to expand the that center section of the house. I think it definitely needed it. So yeah, there I added a staircase as well, which comes from that upper deck down to what will be the outside like lower patio area. So it kind of connects the two main outdoor spaces, which I think is pretty nice. And yeah, that upper deck though, which is way too big. So here I... I do a drastic expansion of the upstairs of the house. So yeah, that did kind of change my vision a little bit of like the three um, like segments that are the same size because the center one ended up being bigger. But I think that kind of makes sense to have a bit of hierarchy, especially since the center one is like the main living area where the living room, dining room, and kitchen all are. So I thought it made sense. Um, although right, right now it's just too big. Um, it was just like a huge kind of, you know, ridiculously sized room. So I um, do shrink it back down again, but I add a second fireplace in as well, which kind of acts as like a nice room divider between the living room and the kitchen. So yeah, I'm gonna move the dining table back over to where it was originally. But yeah, you can see the space is just too vast at this point, a bit, a bit ridiculous. So yeah, <laughs> um, I, the reason I made it that big is actually because I wanted to make it like, have the, the size make sense. like like numerically, I guess, because the other two sections were 14 inches. So I made this one um, 28 inches because I want it to be double, but I ended up cutting it back to 21 inches. I'm saying inches, blocks, 21 tiles, whatever. I cut it down from 28 to 21 tiles. So it's still divisible by seven because it's 14 and 21, which made more sense than 14 and 28 because the 28 was just way too long for this section. So now it's at its final length and that's the final floor plan. All that's good. And, and set in stone well not really set ever set in stone but you know it's done there i just terrain painted in roughly where the driveway is going to go i will um, refine that and that back patio is going to be um, much much improved near the end but again just getting roughly in where all that kind of stuff is going to go and yeah at the moment oh yeah just covering the house in white paint also one thing you might notice here is that there's no ceiling um, on that upper level. So like inside those gables for every room on that, on that floor is just vaulted ceilings into the gable, which is really cool. And you'll see that in the screenshots. The only thing that's a shame is that the color, the inside color of the ceiling on those vaulted sections is just the same color as the roof. So it's just gray. It would look so much better if it could be white, but you know, we can't do that. I really wish you could change the underside of the roof. That would be so nice, but you know, it's not a ceiling technically, so it's just gray. It's just the way it is, but it still looks cool. Um, right now, I'm recoloring all the windows and doors as I always do. I place them all first, then I go back and painstakingly recolor them all. But you can kind of see some of the other windows that came come with this this um, set. Um, I really like these ones as well that are like the overhung or like the not they don't open, but like this the the two um, the smaller windows like the two sections. I think looks nice. Um, yeah, I can see I'm using them for the bedrooms in the basement and stuff there. Um, I like those windows too. So yeah, anyway, just recoloring all the doors as well on the inside. So that's all good and jolly. And I also just very slightly recolored the wood floors. Not that you can really tell the difference though. And oh yeah, also the stairs and the outside, which is good doing those. Um, so it looks nice. But yeah, um, and I think now I think we're going to start getting into doing some of the details and recoloring and actually finishing some of these rooms. So I believe I start with the kitchen and dining room or kitchen and living room. I don't know, kind of area. 
Well, obviously I'm doing the kitchen right now, so I start with the kitchen, but um, yeah, just start kind of recoloring some stuff. I like the windows behind the counter. I think it looks really cool. Unfortunately, they just look out to a blank white wall because of the way the house is, so it's not like it's got a view. It would be cool if it had a view, but I still like it. It's nice. It brings in some light there. I think it's kind of cool to have. I do change the countertop colors, though, because once I add in some lights, they just get way, way overblown. The white just, uh, it's annoying the way the white gets so bright. And I also um, do put chains to hang these pendants from because, of course, there is no ceiling up here. So I do have to do that. So it actually comes from the ceiling. But yeah, actually, this is one interesting thing about this upper level is there's no ceilings, technically. No ceilings that I can place lights on. So only wall lights except for those two kitchen pendants. So yeah, this whole floor just has wall lights and lamps. There's no ceiling lights because uh, I can't put lights on the ceilings um, like that. So, you know, uh, it is what it is. But anyway, um, that's pretty much the kitchen. I mean, I'm going to do a few more things there, but this is the um, living room, the main living room. And yeah, I use those, um, that like furniture set from the store for this uh, living room because I mean, I always use the same set from the store, which I used in this house too, for the formal living room, those black couches over there. I, I love those. It's like my favorite couches and chairs, like the other ones in, in that uh, like formal living room there. I just use them in like almost every house, but yeah, um, so I use them here, but I couldn't use them again in the living room, so I use these, um, which are kind of cool too, very modern looking, uh, getting in some rugs right now and recoloring them so they're like modern looking and not um, old timey, and yeah, so um, what am I going to do? Oh yeah, I need to get in the lights, of course, because I realized I couldn't put ceiling lights in, so I was going through and putting wall lights in uh, all these rooms here just to like make sure I can get it bright enough. Um, so yeah, just doing that. Recoloring the fireplace. I like the double side fireplace. I think it's cool because it's it kind of like the fireplace works as a way of dividing the room up a little bit. So you have the that division, like a, a, it's like a different space, but uh, it's like you know, still like not closing off the room at all. And it has like the nice double-sided kind of look to it. And the chimney is kind of cool too. You'll see in the screenshots, I believe that the chimney of course just goes right up exposed um, right through the, the house there because there's no ceiling to hide it. Um, but yeah, it's getting in some stuff. I really like those shelves under the TV. I used those in my last house as well. Uh, they're from, I think that they're from Aurora Sky. So not 100% sure, but they look nice under a TV there on the wall. And just getting in some more lights and stuff, um, some lamps and things. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it though for this like living room, living room. Um, I, I didn't like, I feel like I didn't furnish the house as like um, densely as I usually sometimes do. I left a little bit more open space in, in some rooms, um, but I think it looks good. And yeah, it's a little bit more minimalist kind of, I guess. But yeah, that's the dining table there. And then this is the entrance um, area. And then I have the powder room here and also the laundry room there. So that's kind of a th that's kind of the way it's set up there. And then this is the uh, primary bathroom, which I struggled to arrange. I really wanted to fit a separate tub, shower, toilet, and two sinks, but it really can't fit in this bathroom. So it had to be just one sink, unfortunately. And then uh, the other bathroom is pretty straightforward. Um, the bathroom that's for the kids' room that's that's there. Um, so I end up um, I end up doing that as well. So I just kind of went through and um, added the basic like layout to the bathrooms um, initially. So I'm just doing that, you know, just getting in the showers, the sinks, the the the, the toilets, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just kind of doing a basic layout of the bathrooms and stuff, but. I think next I'm going to tackle kind of this main first like section of the house um, now. So it's kind of like the entrance area and the powder room, laundry room, formal living room. So just going to do the powder room here. Pretty simple powder room. You got a sink. I think that's from high end loft stuff. And yeah, you got your kind of fancy modern looking square kind of angular toilet that I use in the modern houses that I make. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty simple powder room. I think that's going to be pretty much it for the powder room there. And then the um, laundry room is also fairly simple, very straightforward. Got a washer dryer. Um, you can see them there. Recoloring those. And there's a shelf with some decorations on it, like laundry room decor. And, um, you know, that's pretty much that right there. So now I think we're going to do this main kind of formal living room, kind of where you enter the house into. It's where the stairs are as well. So I'm using my favorite couches, like I mentioned before, my favorite couches and chairs there um, that I have. I kind of put them in gray. It's very neutral. Actually, a lot of the house is very neutral, but especially this room, it's very gray. 
Um, oh, was that it? I guess that was it. That was that room. So there you go. And now we're doing the primary bedroom. So this room has a nice balcony that overlooks the river. And it's not actually the biggest bedroom in the house, I don't think. Um, although it's pretty much the same as the other larger ones. But yeah, it's not a huge room, but I think it's nice. And also I like this, I like this bed without the metal strip, which this is a base game bed and usually it's like a metal strip in the headboard that I always like have like, you know, just use this metal, but this time I recolored that metal strip as wood and it actually looks quite nice. Um, the bed looks nicer than it, than it did before, but that's just the base game bed. Um, so I thought that was kind of fun, but yeah, again, very neutral in the bedroom as well. Got like a bit of green kind of color to it, but more of like a calming tone. Um, there's also a TV in here, which is nice. Um, I'm getting in some flowers and stuff, a little plants, um, a little candle there. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty simple room. Like again, like I mentioned, I'm not going crazy with these rooms. So, you know, that's pretty much it for that bedroom. And then of course I'm going to do the bathrooms and stuff. Right now I'm just getting some more wall lights in because of course you can't put the ceiling lights in. So I was making sure everything was lit up adequately. Oh, I also changed the walls on the inside to have baseboards on them, which I thought would be a nice little touch. So I just went through and, and did that. But yeah, every room in the house is white walls. It's the same white as it's on the outside of the house as well, which is something I kind of do in modern houses pretty often is I just do white. I don't know why. It's just kind of, it's kind of what happens. But yeah. And right now I'm just getting in um, the master bathroom, primary bathroom, whatever uh, you want to call it. So yeah, just doing that, um, getting in the uh, kind of fun countertop there and also putting it on the tub and getting in a different floor tile here as well. So it's recoloring that. And then of course, just gonna get in all the little details and things, got the toilet paper, hand towels, um, other towels over the tub there, just just little things um, just around the room um, just to make it look nice and detailed. But yeah, that's pretty much it. A little mat on the floor. Um, and I think that's the uh, pretty much all I do for that bathroom. But um, yeah, so next we're gonna move on to the kids' rooms. So this is kind of the main kids' rooms. That's gonna be a teen's room in the basement or the lower level, but yeah, this is kind of more like a kid's room, I guess. It's small, um, but it has like really huge windows on it. Not the best for privacy because they face the street, but you know, it is what it is. I put blinds on them, so you know, that's that's something. And yeah, right now, just recoloring the bed. Again, again, it's, it's a bit more neutral, although this has kind of like a purplish tint to it, um, to this room. But yeah, this room has a desk with a laptop, uh, so I thought that was nice to have and like that small kind of more compact dresser there by the door. And here I'm just getting in um, a little lamp. Uh, I think I actually just use the same one from the living room, a little clock. And uh, yeah, I also put some shelves over the desk with some decorative items on them. I put the yellow horse in here initially, but near the end I move it actually to the office downstairs. I thought it was a bit more fitting, but anyway, here just getting in just some small decorations and, and things, knickknacks and stuff, um, clutter items, if you will. And uh, also like a little plant there, a lamp. This room is a little dark, but it's kind of nice lamp light, which I thought was, you know, it's nice and warm at least. But yeah, it's on the darker side at night because there's only one wall light in this room and two lamps. But yeah, um, I think that's actually it for the bedroom pretty much, like getting in some little toys, but that's pretty much it. And then I'm also gonna do the ensuite bathroom. It is nice, this bedroom has an ensuite bathroom. So just gonna recolor some of the stuff here. It's gonna be pretty simple though. Nothing too crazy, got a tub, shower, sink, toilet, and I'm gonna get into a floor there that's kind of different. But um, yeah, pretty straightforward in this uh, bathroom. And just a very simple, um, you know, just a uh, more general bathroom. So yeah, getting in the details though, like a hand towel and like the, little toilet paper and also the uh, floor mat. But yep, that's pretty much it, I think. So um, now I think, let's see what we're gonna move on to. I'm actually not 100% sure, I guess downstairs, but yeah. So we're gonna get some ceiling lights downstairs because I can use ceiling lights downstairs because there's a ceiling, so that's cool. So I'm just doing that. I'm getting in the lights um, on this level. And also getting in an archway there for the office room instead of it being um, closed off at the door. And I also got some bookshelves um, in both rooms as well. So I thought that would be nice and like a runner on the floor down here and Also gonna get in um, the bathroom. So the one bathroom down here Actually, one of the bathrooms down here is a hallway bathroom, but it's right next to the bedroom that's there So it's it might as well be an ensuite, but it is also accessible to anyone else that's on the level So it's kind of also a good just general bathroom for the floor uh, so yeah, a, a nice like you know general hallway bathroom. But yeah, again, this bathroom is pretty simple. You got your tub shower combo, sink, toilet. That's pretty much it. 
And then uh, this bedroom here is gonna be the teen's room. It's a little bit dark because it only has a couple windows and they look kind of into a like gap between like the two sections of the house. So, you know, it's not like the brightest room, but it's of a decent size. Uh, I kind of went for, yeah, like a teen's room kind of vibe here. Um, so I'm just kind of recoloring um, some stuff here, getting in these side tables and lamps. Kristoff was being kind of slow, so it was just taking taking a while to get it right um, naturally, so you can see that's happening right now. Just kind of fumbling around with the creative style. Uh, it was really, really not working out for me at, the, at this moment, but oh my gosh, you can see me trying to just drag over from one lamp to the next. It was like going crazy, but anyway, that's um, done now. So got some posters in here, got a dresser as well, and I'm also going to get in a small desk in here with a laptop, so um, this, you know, Sam in here can also use a computer, just like the child sim upstairs and, you know, or the, that bedroom. So got like a small little table there in that like window nook. And that's where I kind of put the laptop and yeah. So, you know, pretty simple. Also got a TV in this room. So that's fancy. And then another poster there. And of course I'm gonna get a rug as well, just to kind of finish it off. And then also the closet, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this bedroom. Uh, fairly simple, but um, it's, a, it's a pretty good bedroom, you know, I, I wanted to have these downstairs bedrooms just so it wasn't like a two-bedroom house, so it makes a bit more sense to use the space, even though it's not the brightest, um, you know, because it doesn't have those huge windows, but it's still pretty good. Uh, there's also like a fun little staircase there that goes between the two sections of the house, so you can kind of get to the basement from the front um, entrance, or like from the front, you can like kind of go down those stairs right to the basement, or right to this bottom level, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But anyway, right here, this is kind of the bonus room, pool table room. I don't know. It's got some bookshelves, a pool table, and a couple chairs, and that's pretty much it. So, you know, that's, that's that. And I also got a chandelier in here, though, which is kind of fun. So you can see that over the pool table and a plant in the corner. So there you go. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the pool table room, uh, pretty much. It's kind of like a bonus room. And you're seeing blinds in the windows as well. So um, just doing that right now. And, oh yeah, adjusting the terrain there, which I think I end up adjusting it again later. So, you know, it's, you know, always little adjustments happening. Anyway, uh, also getting a car in. So getting in this SUV here in the garage and also recoloring the garage door because I had yet to do that. So just doing that right now. Um, and then also getting in some outside lighting. So that's fun. Haven't done that yet, um, but I will obviously come back and do most of the outside stuff um, soon. But just getting in those lights and things. Also adjusting these stairs because I want them to be too wide and not just one wide because I thought it was kind of weird. Although I actually changed them again to push them farther back. So, you know, lots of stair work there. Um, and smoothing the train was being really glitchy near the street. As you can see, the lot kind of clips into the road a little bit there, the front edge, which I couldn't really, I don't know. I tried like placing a lot a couple times. I just kept doing that. So you know, it's like the terrain is like a, a bit glitchy, like up by the street. It just was like being weird with the terrain paint. Like I, it was really, you can see it's like really making me struggle to like do the terrain paint here. So I tried my best to make it work. Um, but it, you know, I think it's pretty good. It works out fine. Anyway, you can kind of see the garage, or the driveway, sorry, the driveway kind of appearing now a little bit more refined and the, and the front walkway as well. Um, they're a bit a bit separated now, so it's not just like one giant um, blob at the front. So yeah, just doing that like little adjustment there. And um, yeah, so you kind of have the separate driveway and front walkway and just getting in some plants right now, even though it's not really the main landscaping section of the of the video, but just doing just doing some stuff. Um, just a few things here and there. I don't know, I want that little triangle in the center. I thought it'd be kind of fun to have. So I just put some plants there. And yeah, here I'm gonna do a little slightly time consuming process of making this retaining wall kind of um, match or like kind of doesn't match, but it, it like goes um, down, it slopes down to like, you know, go along with the driveway. Cause obviously it's just way too tall there at, at the far end if it's just like flat on the top. So I did um, lower it, you know, it kind of falls downwards towards the bottom there. Um, so I'm just doing that right now, and there you go. So that's the retaining wall now, just along the driveway, and just recoloring that, adding a little bit of a nice wood trim there on the top as well. But yeah, that's the driveway. Actually, I extended the driveway a little bit here, so that um, it looks like a slightly more realistic, but it's still probably not enough room for a car to turn around there. But you know, it looks a bit better if it's a little bit longer. Also, I put a fence at the end just because otherwise, 
it goes right into the river, so I thought it'd be good to have some sort of barrier there. Um, right now I'm just adjusting the terrain along this part of the garage um, slash bonus room area. But right now I'm going to do the kind of back patio, which I was talking about much earlier on. So this is kind of just like a nice um, tiered like a back patio area. So you kind of have the upper level there, which is off of the bonus room and also has the stairs to it from the upper level. And then there's a few steps down into like this um, larger kind of lower area. So yeah, I thought this was nice though to have this kind of um, uh, outdoor patio right by the river front. So just, you know, adding in these retaining walls here so it, it looks nice and then just putting in the terrain paint. So there you go. And yeah, so that's pretty much um, that little area down there. Also relocating the, the air conditioning unit because I had to move it. Um, and then also I put in some rocks along here as well so that it kind of hides the terrain being a little funky. But yeah, that's, um, that's that kind of lowered sunken uh, section there. So I thought that was nice to have. And now I think we're going to do the guest bedroom, maybe. Yeah, we're going to do the guest bedroom. So this bedroom is also on the lower level. It's right off of the pool table room, and it has an ensuite bathroom, which is nice. And yeah, also very neutral in color scheme. I think it's just like mostly gray, um, kind of gray and purple-ish um, going on here. But yeah, just basically a guest room. Again, this basement bedroom vibe doesn't have like, you know, a beautiful view, but it's got nice windows, like large windows, just kind of looks out to a white wall, so it's a little unfortunate, but yeah, um, still pretty good bedroom, so just kind of furnishing it right now, getting it all together, uh, I think that's pretty much it though, got a chair in the corner, so yeah, and then also getting in the closet there, of course, just for nice decoration, got the clothes in there, and then the bathroom here as well, which is very similar to the other bathrooms, but you know, it's nice, this bedroom has an ensuite, so this could also be like technically like a primary bedroom, I guess, but the other one's much nicer because it has the balcony and, you know, it's upstairs and has like the high ceilings, big windows, the view of the river, whereas this one has no view, so, you know, it's a little bit more, um, a little bit less impressive, I guess, but yeah, um, just getting in, uh, you know, all the little details and things in here and stuff like that, but I think that's pretty much it for that uh, section. And then I think really this is the last room, main room in the house is this kind of office slash bonus room space. Um, so I have a computer in here. So it's kind of like the office uh, section. And then also there's a shelf there. It's where I move the yellow horse to. And then, oh yeah, in here I put like um, gym stuff. But anyway, back to this room. Got some uh, little pictures on the wall there. But yeah, nice wall of bookshelves in here. I got a couple of beanbag chairs, so it's kind of like fun, fun vibes and like this um, little couch. So yeah, that's pretty much what this room is going to consist of, but it has cool views out those windows. It's really big windows um, that overlook the river. So, um, you know, I thought that was kind of nice to have that like this is kind of a nice, a nice room to hang out in, I guess, or to do work in. So I thought that worked pretty well. And I also got a pool, ta a pool table, a chess table, very different. Got a chess table in here. So, um, you know, your Sims can work on their logic skill or whatever in this room as well. So it has those study vibes. But anyway, this is, I guess, technically the last room, but it's a um, just weird bonus room that's like not attached to the rest of the house. Um, I put a pull-up bar, a treadmill, a weights machine, and then I also put in like a the workbench thing from Ambitions. Um, you know, do with it what you will. If you've done the house, you can put something else in here. I just didn't really know what to do with this space because it is a little bit random. So, you know, I mean, I could have just not put anything down here because it could have just been a black void. Um, but I wanted to use it for something. I thought it was, you know, it would, it would be good to have something there. So, yeah. Anyway, out here I have a fire pit, which I thought was nice. The, the chairs had the weird transparent thing, but there you go. Got a fire pit. Those Not all those chairs might be usable, though, because of the wall, but I just wanted a place there. So, you know, you might have to move that a little bit if, if you want that to work. But um, I got a small dining table out here with a grill. There's a larger dining table on the upper, like, deck. Um, so you know, that's um, kind of near, near to the kitchen. And then uh, I also got some lounge chairs out here as well that kind of face towards the river. So I thought that would be nice. Um, and then I also put a couple more lounge chairs up here on the upper deck. And then that's the upstairs dining table, which is a bit more, uh, a bit larger, also has an umbrella. And yeah, so I think that's actually it for the outdoor seating uh, arrangements. Um, here I was telling you I was going to move these stairs. So I did. I just 
push them back a bit because they were kind of going underneath that like glass um, kind of hallway there. So I wanted, uh, I didn't want that interfering. So I moved them back a little bit. Um, right now I'm just recoloring this like wood on the edge here of of the glass panels just so it matches the floor a little bit better. So it blends in a little bit better with the wood floors. But um, it is annoying with the top, the way the roof eaves kind of glitch through the glass. It's a little annoying, but uh, you know, not much I can do about that. Anyway, right now I'm just painting inside the foundation areas black, which is um, something I like to do just to, you know, just make it look nice and clean so you don't see all that kind of um, terrain and stuff happening underneath in those areas. For some reason, this one messed up the terrain naturally, so had to fix that, but um, yeah. And just doing some more adjustments here and there um, with the terrain still. And yeah, basically all that's left is I'm going to do some more details in the garage, and then I'm going to do some landscaping, and that's in terrain paint, of course, but you know, that will pretty much be it um, at that point. So yeah, but as I mentioned earlier on, there's a download link in the description below if you want to download the house. And of course, if you want to download the house, you'll also have to get the um, custom content that I used for the windows and those um, doors, sliding glass doors. So links um, to those um, sets will be in the description as well. And also I'll leave a link to um, how to install the custom content if you haven't done it before. But um, yeah, so all that's in the description. And you know, if you enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. Um, I have a lot more videos like this on my channel. If you haven't checked, uh, if, you, if you have not yet checked those out, I recommend going and checking those out if you liked this one. And yeah, so I'm just doing some landscaping now. I'm getting in the plants and stuff all around, moving the mailbox there. It was being a little glitchy because of the weird terrain, but you know, anyway. Yeah, getting in some trees and stuff, getting in some terrain paint now at this point. So yeah, there's also going to be some screenshots coming up in just a few moments. So you can see kind of the inside perspective of the house and what it looks like. It's a little unfortunate. The ceilings on the upper level are gray because, you know, they're the underside of the roof. I couldn't really do anything about that, but, you know, it still looks cool. So you'll see those if you stick around for the screenshots. Um, but yeah, really right now I'm just doing um, some general terrain paint. Um, and I'll do a little bit of outdoor lighting stuff, I guess, as well. So, you know, a little outdoor lights here along the driveway, which I thought would be nice to have. So just doing that. And then I think the very last thing is like some garage, um, some garage decorations. But that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>